Good afternoon, everyone. We will be getting started in just a couple of minutes. All right, Melanie, it is 2.01. Should we go ahead and kick this thing off? Yes, ma'am. Right. Hi, everybody. I am Kara, um, and welcome to our uh, Real Source University summer sessions. Um, we have taken a little bit of break from the spring courses and are happy to be here with you guys in the comforts of your home offices. Maybe you're sitting by the pool at your uh, the, the the kitchen table, and and some of us have been lucky enough to even get back into the office. So thanks for taking the time today. Um, we appreciate you being here. All right, so we go through um, uh, the slide, you know, before every class, and what we want to really do is say, hey, we're a Realogy Title Group, um, and we are a, a, a group of over 40 different title companies across the nation who come together uh, to help agents, you know, grow their business through education and all kinds of different great uh, opportunities. Uh, we're a big company, but we're also small companies at the same time. So you get that like comfort from this doing business on the, the local level, but also a power that comes with kind of corporate um, level of, of, of business. So uh, you probably were invited uh, by one of these uh, companies on this page and hopefully you love them, you do business with them. Um, and again, if you're ever doing business in any other states, they probably have someone that they can uh, refer your way. So the other thing I wanna mention is before we dive into the content, we have some other great classes coming to you guys for the summer session. Uh, next Friday, we have a brand and content development class where it's going to talk about your personal brand and then how to develop content that fits that and your target audience. We have some risks, exclusions, and conditions of title insurance policy. So that's a really good class. That'll be um, taught by our underwriter title resource group. We'll do some dot loop 101 later in August as well as some zip forms. And then we have a guaranteed rate affinity coming in on August 14th to do growing your business with renovation lending. So that'll be a really good one as well. And then to round up the end of our summer uh, classes, we do have a class being trained by Brad Duggar. Uh, he is known for his um, Instagram marketing class. So we're excited to welcome him back for becoming a negotiating guru. So that's August 21st and then we'll take a little bit of break and then gear up for fall semester. Uh, you can sign up for any of these classes just like you signed up for this one. Uh, for a quick link just go to trgc.com forward slash virtual training. All right, and today, welcome. My name again is Kara McKenrick. I am the National Education Manager for Realty Title Group. Um, and I started my career in the industry uh, several years ago, and I worked for uh, a marketing director for a top agent who was affiliated with Century 21. I then moved from there to Caldwell Banker, where I worked with many agents uh, to mentor, to train, and to coach them on different tools and technology and tips that kind of would help grow their business. 
business. Uh, about a year ago, a little over a year ago, I transitioned to the title side of the business, um, and it's here where I drive value-added marketing efforts. And, and one of the things that comes with the value-added marketing is really national education, right? So education, how do we help agents like yourself get out there and grow their business? Um, the concept is pretty simple. Uh, if you guys grow your business, so do we at the end. So we're invested in your success, you know, not only helping you develop, but also giving you guys great customer service. Um, now, those few things might give me a little bit of the experience to be able to talk about this agent's guide to marketing to millennials. But one of the one main things that gives me the ability to talk about it is I am a millennial. So I am 34 years old. I currently live in Florida, in case none of you guys know that. I came from Maryland, live in the great Florida life now. So that summer school thing that you saw in the beginning, the girl right by the pool, sometimes that's me. Um, so I am happy to kind of deep dive into uh, this a little bit with you. Um, so we're gonna start by diving into some data. Um, so it's better for you to understand, you know, your target audience before we get into talking about how we market it to them. Um, so this should be pretty quick and painless. I know not everybody likes talking about stats. Um, so let's start with defining who a millennial is. I think what happens is we all get lumped into uh, one generalization of a millennial, but really the, the generation is, the millennial generation is broken down into different groups. So there's the older um, millennials, which are the ages of 31, 40, that's me. And then there's a younger millennial generation, which is the 22 to 30 years old. Now, I want to challenge you guys for one second. OK, so think about yourselves right now at 25 years old. OK, think hard. What were you doing? What what job did you have? Where did you live? What were you you know doing for fun? Now I want you to think real hard and I want you to take yourself to 30 or 35. What were you doing then? probably something is very different there, right? So I think when the, the purpose of this exercise is to say, hey, a 22 year old is very different from a 35 to 39 year old. So think about that. And remember, not all millennials are the same. They really are these two separate groups. Um, and, and you should think about that because their tastes and their change, uh, their, their lifestyles are evolving, right? And you're gonna wanna evolve with that. All right, so let's look at the opportunity. So generational opportunity. So NAR comes out with this really great report, which I'm gonna actually send um, a link to it uh, in the follow-up email to all of you guys. And it's basically buyers and sellers trends on a general perspective. So you can see here that millennials as a whole make up the largest group of home buyers, which is which is pretty cool. Um, so it's it's I think that shows you right there where there's opportunity. Now, if you looked at this report, you know, 10 years ago, we probably didn't make up such a big, you know, percentage of home buyers. So again, there's evolution. We're getting older, okay? Now, the other thing to think about here is if you look at um, of this thing, millennials are, sorry, it's, <laughs> uh, gen, it's very tidy. Uh, gen Y, the younger millennials, uh, they actually made up the uh, lower segment of sellers, right? Where you see um, the older millennials actually are selling, right? So what does that tell you? That tells you that the younger generation of millennials are more first time home buyers, where some of those older millennials have already gone through that um, a little bit, okay? Um, the other thing that I didn't put in here, but when you start digging into the report, you're really gonna see it. Um, so older millennials had the highest share of, they were married couples, right? So 67% of the people who, the older millennials who got married were married, or who bought were married, while younger millennials were the highest of unmarried couples, right? So 21% of the, the couples who bought a home were unmarried in that younger generation. So, you know, again, that says, okay, people are willing to buy with their significant others and not give in to, to the marriage part of it. Um, so marriage, again, I think what you're gonna say is, 
it, it, it does play a role into lifestyle, which then dictates what kind of home they're going to shop for. And we're going to dig deeper into that in a little bit. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the money uh, as far as the millennial goes. So as any new good agent knows, you need to pre-qualify your um, buyers, no matter what generation they are, to make sure you're not wasting your time, to know what they can afford. Um, and, and there's a lot of your time goes into the shopping process. So know what they can do. Don't dangle really expensive properties over their face if they can't afford it. Um, so this is a really cool graph which is courtesy of Ellie May um, and it's pretty interesting here because you can see the older millennials did um, a lot of the uh, the purchasing there where the younger uh, sorry older millennials had refinance and younger millennials have purchasing can you guys tell that talking about data is not my favorite <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'll get into my kind of butter, bread and butter here in a minute. Um, but conventional loans are up. So these are just some little fun things you can do. Again, there'll be these resources and a bunch of other statistics that aren't my favorite to talk about, but something that you should know and watch over the years um, in there. So let's get into what I don't stutter over, and that is going to be introducing you to the millennials. Um, so we're going to stay away from the, the statistics and we're going to get more into the concept of who these people are. All right, so you guys know, because we've all had our childhoods, we always can go back to things that we remember that it our childhoods craft who we are as, an, as we become as adults. Um, and there is no doubt that millennials are far more tech savvy than previous generations. Now, again, this is where the younger and older millennial kind of break out is when it comes to technology. So older millennial kids like myself, like I had a dial TV, which we only had like five channels, five and 54 and then 45, and that was pretty much it. Um, we had phones that were attached to cords. You know, you're not going anywhere. You're stuck there at the kitchen counter. Um, I had Teddy Ruxpin. That was my only real technology that I had. We played games like little discs that are, um, they're cardboard and they're called pods. Right, we played with cardboard. <laughs> so, you know, and we came in when the street lights were on and we know what a floppy disk is. Where if you look at someone who is just say five years younger, my little brother is 29 years old. Um, he had Game Boys and, and he had a cordless phone that he could walk around and giga, gigapets and the CDs were a big thing. While I experienced those later, I grew up without them, you know, I was a child without them. So I saw that evolution of technology. Um, so I think long story short, no matter if you're a younger millennial or you're an older millennial, technology does play a very big role in our decision making process. Um, and we've adapted to it. Some, the younger had it when we started and the olders, you know, we kind of watched it in its infancy. So, you know, keep that in mind. Um, and we're going to talk more about millennials and technology in a moment. All right. So talking about them a little bit more, let's check their vibe a little bit. And hopefully you guys uh, know what I mean when I say that. Um, so both younger and older millennials strive for a low stress life. Um, so if you're familiar with apps like Headspace and Insight Timers, they're literally apps that we can put on our phones, stick our earbuds in, and we can meditate for a few minutes, uh, 10 minutes, 30 minutes. It plays beach music, guided meditations, we love that stuff. You know, don't kill our vibes. Essential oils, we're all in it. So, you know, when you're working with a millennial, I think it's important not to kill their vibe with negativity to keep it as low stress as possible. That doesn't mean you need to pat us on the heads, but that means you just don't bring, you know, the negativity. Then we have green lifestyle. So in addition to a love for houseplants, um, typically millennials strive for sustainability. Uh, we want to combat uh, climate change. So to be honest with you, if you show up as a real estate agent with a big old stack of paper, I'm going to look at you sideways and say, how many trees did you kill today with that? You know, so think about that when you're, you're moving forward. Uh, the other thing, you know, you'll see that we're into 
hybrid vehicles and green technology at low emissions, those types of things. And, and that is really important when we go into, you know, just living our everyday lives and even being behind companies and businesses that stand for something. Um, and then work-life balance. So millennials are not lazy. So we all used to get lumped together and it was a dirty word. And even for me, I was like, I'm not a millennial. Don't call me that, you know, because it was not a good thing. People used to talk very bad about it. And one of the things that they said is we were lazy, um, but that's not the case. We just really want to enjoy ourselves. We watched our parents work and work and work. Um, and a lot of times they never left their, their state. They never left the country. They didn't really live their life. They had kids young, worked all the time. We don't want to do that. So we kind of take a step back and say, hey, I'm willing to work and I work my butt off. But when I want to play, I'm going to play. OK, so we are a work life balance is very important to a millennial. All right. The other thing about millennials is that we are very socially open minded. So LBGTQ, Black Lives Matter, other kind of social platforms, you know, we're behind this. And I think one of the, the reasons can be is because we're more connected globally and with people than we've ever been before because of technology, right? We are able to make connections and understand what people are going through and sympathetic to that and want to make a positive impact socially, have everybody live in, you know, just cohesiveness um, and coexist. So when you are working with a millennial, just be careful what politics you bring into it. Um, try to be open, honest and transparent. Um, um, but know that we are a little, you know, we're aware, we're socially aware and conscious in, in some of the things. So be careful what you put out there. A lot of times if you're posting certain things online, a millennial will probably find it. <laughs> so be cautious. Um, so community. Millennials are very like vibing with community. So we encourage open dialogue online. Again, it goes back to the social um, open mindedness, in depth discussions. We want to network. We want to exchange ideas um, and socially we like to hang out with each other. So that's why, you know, coffee shops will be a big thing and bars, quite frankly, you got to love your, your wine bars. Um, but community is definitely an important part of the, the millennial vibe. The other thing you're going to look at um, is we're an efficient visionary, right? So I think, so when I came in, and this is kind of just a, a personal story, I, I tend to be a little bit of a wrecking ball, or at least that's what I'm perceived. I come into a company and I'm like, okay, this is great. Hey, guess what? We can do it better. Let's try doing it this way. And everybody's like, no, 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 no. And they say the most dangerous saying that there is that anyone can say, well, we've always done it this way. Okay. I hear you've always done it this way, but guess what? There could be a better way, right? We could make the process less stressful. We can save more time. We can leverage technology, right? So, so millennials are always out there with this visionary idea, like, hey, let's collaborate on making it better. Um, and some of the best companies out there and best real estate agents are out there adapting to that. Um, and at the end of the day, we like to feel rewarded <laughs> with our work and what we put in. So we like those pats on the back. Um, we want to feel accomplished. We want to feel like we made a difference. Um, and that's just one of the ways that we do it. All right, so let's deep dive now that you've met the, the millennial a little bit. Let's dive into the marketing concepts of millennial. So the first thing you're going to want to do is market yourself, right? So how are you going to do that? Well, first you're going to start with your online presence, okay? So my next slide, I'm going to talk about some platforms, but make sure your online presence, all of your, your pictures look the same, everything is updated. If there is one wonky thing, we're probably going to find it because how are we going to find our agent? If our mom and dad even referred us to them or aunt, uncle and, and Larry or whoever gave them our information, we're going to pick up our phones and we're going to Google them. Okay. If we don't get referred to someone, what are we going to do? We're going to look online, right? Maybe somebody I know posted a picture of something and there's this whole big inner lining, what they call the World Wide Web. So, make sure your online presence is there. Um, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at your reviews. So I'm an avid Amazon um, 
shopper. Literally, I'll be like, I'm out of Dijon mustard. Boop, boop, boop. I'm not putting it on my list. I'm probably going to order it from Amazon or put it in my Instacart. Um, and if I'm ordering anything like I just ordered a box of mice, little kind of toy mice for my cats. And I looked at the reviews. Did they fall apart? You know, did did they stink? Did it not rattle? Did all of them rattle? Like I looked at the reviews. I would take it even more seriously in looking at the reviews if I was going to invest my time and make a very big decision in which I had help from an agent. So make sure your reviews are up to date. Make sure your social media is up to date. I am on social media every single day. So if you have a profile there, keep it up to date. There are schedulers out there that will allow you to, you know, drip content up, set it and forget it. Use it, okay? The worst thing is not having one. And the second worst thing is having one where you haven't posted anything since 2016. So don't do it. I probably won't go with you then. The other thing is updated headshot. So again, we talk about being socially open minded. Uh, we talk about, you know, low stress and kind of loving yourself and who you are. Well, if I come across a real estate agent with a headshot from 1992, I, I'm, I'm going to know, right? One, the photography wasn't all that clear back then. And two, hair and, and style and all of that plays a complete role. Now, I, I begin to question, why aren't they taking a picture of what they look like now? Why aren't they loving themselves? Why aren't they proud of who they are, right? It feels like you're trying to pull wool over my eyes a little bit. I don't think you might be out forthcoming and trusting. So, you know, having an updated headshot to, you know, a younger and older millennial, I think is very, very important. And it should be important for yourself. Love who you are and be proud of that. Um, communication methods. So, I, I don't like talking on the phone often um, unless it's going to be too much to do over text. So my first preference is texting. Um, and if you want to have a phone call where we get even more in depth, send me a text that says, hey, Kara, are you available um, at around 1030 for a you know 10 minute phone call? Absolutely. We can schedule that in. OK, so be willing to to be flexible in your communication methods. Um, the other thing that I was thinking is, you know, when you guys are sending listings and paperwork and all these links to websites and stuff, we have a habit of doing that all via um, email. Think about doing that via text, right? You can follow up with an email and do mixed media, right? So, you know, just know and, and of course ask, right? So ask how they want to be communicated with, but be open that you're not always going to get them on the phone, okay? So when you're marketing yourselves, don't get deterred because they're not picking that phone up. If they don't see that number or know that number, text them, tell them what you want, okay? Digital presentations. Don't come to my house with a binder of the stuff and a picture of you from like back in the day and you know some it just just don't do that like let we your brokerages out there work so hard and invest so much money into giving you guys technology to help yourselves look you know innovative and tech forward use it. Don't go with those binders and those old portfolios or just come with a pen and paper. Go invest in an iPad. Do the digital presentations. They only take a few minutes when you do it. And I tell you, they're impressive. Um, and, and just please j go digital. All right. Uh, again, that goes back to the, uh, the environments thing, like stop wasting paper and you can leave things behind. You can leave a little packet behind but your majority of your listing presentation or buyer presentation should be digital. Um, when you're marketing to them, so obviously you don't always get them the first time around. So there will be a drip kind of marketing that you do with them. So do diverse content. It doesn't always have to be about real estate. Oh, just an update. Here's a new one on the market. Or, hey, this is interest rates now. How about you throw a cocktail recipe in there or some trends on paint colors, right? Some things that I might want to read. Uh, this is where uh, Christy Langford, she's having a class next Friday that's going to talk a little bit about who your target audience is and what that content looks like. So I highly suggest getting into that because it's true who are they what do they want and and do diverse content just plowing real estate into someone's face all the time isn't necessarily a great way to get them to do business 
Okay. Um, and, and be an agent that listens. So, you know, you got to evolve, you got to listen and know that the generation is evolving. So we can literally have this little class right here, right now. And I will tell you in a year, some of this data might be completely outdated or need to be updated and added things because we're going to continue to evolve. So the best thing you can do, whether it's now, two years from now, five years from now, whatever, is always ask questions. Be that agent who listens and tries to understand them better. OK. All right. So we talked a little bit about the online presence. So your digital footprint is going to be very important. Again, I Google everything. If my toilet breaks and it starts making that weird sound where it's like filling water and I got to jiggle the handle, I'm going to go to YouTube because I'm not a plumber and I'm going to see if I can figure out how to do it. My first instinct is not to call the plumber. I'm going to go to YouTube and see if I can watch a video. You know why I'm going to watch a video is because I'd rather consume the information in a faster method than sorting and sifting through a bunch of long articles. I love to read, don't get me wrong, but I can easily easily take that information and process it if it's in video form, OK? So then we look at other social media kind of things. So TikTok's a big one right now. Um, if you're not on that, don't feel like you need to jump on it. Um, but know that there are millennials out there TikToking. I think that for a little while, uh, everybody was like, oh, there's only 12 year olds on there. Yeah, there's some 12 year olds, but there's also a lot of bored millennials who have been stuck at home in the COVID days who are drinking and making some great videos. Um, so don't be afraid to kind of tap into this. Um, as far as social media goes, I would say if there were any platforms you definitely should be on, it would be Facebook and it would be Instagram. OK, but like I said before, Com if you're going to do it, commit to doing it. Even if you have to hire someone to kind of help feed that in there, just make sure you're relevant and you're active um, with the, the social media marketing. Now, the other thing you're going to see on here is I have Redfin. I have Zillow, Trulia, Realtor.com. So this is where that you should. I'm highly suggesting, like 100% suggesting, that you go on each one of these websites and you make sure your information is up to date and it's consistent with what the other one is. Now, if we were to look at all of these websites together and let's say you only had half of them updated, that's a pretty good start. But what does that do for you? That helps you with search engine optimization because I'm going to put Brad Duggar real estate agent and it's going to pull from Redfin, Realtor.com, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and I'm going to be like, whoa, this Brad guy's pretty awesome. OK, so there is a great there's is so much power in making sure your digital footprint is active and up to date. So get out there and get these done if you haven't. Um, and if you have marketing people in your offices, um, go for it. Ask them, set up a time with them. They're there to help you. All right, so let's jump into marketing a home. OK, so 99% of millennial buyers are going to shop online. So I don't know what the other 1% are doing. Maybe they just are given a house, um, but we're all going to shop online. So again, that's why it's important to make sure those Zillows, the Realtor.com uh, profiles and all of that good stuff is up to date. Um, the other thing you want to note is use professional photography. OK, don't pull out your smartphone. And then I, I had agents and this is up until about a year ago that were using like the little digital cameras that they would walk around. And if you plug it up to your computer and dump it on the laptop, there's like a little time and date stamp on the bottom that's like yellow and digitized. Don't do that, please. Spend a couple hundred bucks or hundred dollars or whatever it is and get professional photography. OK, um, it's really going to make a difference again if I look at it online and I'm like, Ugh, and it could just be from the pictures. I'm going to go past it and I'm not going to set up a time to go see that. OK, so professional photography is very important. Um, video again, I told you I'm going to video everything, right? That's really going to give us another opportunity to see the house right from a different perspective. Uh, drone footage. Uh, millennials like to get into details, right? We're like, OK, from a literally up top view, what does it look like? And I think that 
The other thing is drones are kind of cool um, and it shows me you're leveraging innovative technology. So that's awesome. Um, bullet points. OK, so again, I told you I like to read, but I don't need to to read a full out poem, whimsical story about the this house and how great it would be to live there. Just give me some highlights, right? I'm looking at a lot like do your value added positions quickly. You only have a couple seconds to get that um, those like quick things, those best parts about a home out. Get it out and cut the fluff. Um, sharing links again, I talked about it earlier. Share with text, you know, hyperlink things. Don't give me big links that are full of um, uh, of, of words. There's I think everybody's had a link sent to them where it's literally like two lines long and you know it's blue and underlined and all that. Have someone or Google teaching you how to hyperlink your emails. I promise you it's so much better. And again, your brokerages out there have a lot of the things that can really help you with that. Um, the same thing with easy shopping. OK, so you know make it easy for me. I want to be able to save. I want to be able to sort and filter and um, you know get alerts when something goes under contract or sells or, or what have you. Um, so the shopping experience has to be as easy and professional looking as possible. Um, and, and look at the end of the day, if you are marketing a home, you are marketing yourself. OK, so this this isn't just important about selling that particular home. It's about marketing yourself. If I'm don't have a real estate agent and I'm sitting here shopping for a home and I'm like, wow, what a great job this real estate agent did. Oh, they did this great walkthrough video. Oh, this is nice. You know what? We should we should call her as our agent. So to think of it as a marketing opportunity for you, not just at home. So kill those two birds with one stone because there are opportunity on both sides of the deal. All right, so let's say we got the we we marketed ourselves. We got the uh, the millennial client. We found them an awesome home because it's all beautiful and it was great. It had videos and drone and all that good stuff. Let's talk about the overall digital experience. So virtual contract completion again I brought it up a couple of times don't give me a stack of paper okay what how many again how many kill, trees are we killing today um, there are programs out there DocuSign uh, dot loop uh, zip forms all these things that you can do by just digitally sending the contract over to me and I can go ahead and click here and click there and sign and whoop done time stamped and less work for you because you don't have to run back to the office and scan it in or anything right um, so utilize those programs do virtual contract completion um, other thing is there's virtual ways to deposit escrow now right from your phone okay a lot of millennials don't have checkbooks the only reason i actually own a checkbook is about three months ago i hired a new long guy because I like low maintenance stuff and I don't want to cut the lawn um, and I had to order checks. First off, I didn't know where to go on my online baking app to do so. Um, and then second, once I got them, I'm like, OK, well, this is so many. It's going to take me like a lifetime to go through them. Um, so literally all my mobile making besides now the long guy is done with my phone. So there are some Realogy Title Group um, individual companies across the nation that are starting to adapt to Zocom. Um, but again, how awesome is that? It's awesome for the customer because they don't have to go and go to the bank. I mean, I can't tell you the last time I went to a bank and then like, you know, go to the office and drop the, the thing off. I mean, with COVID, no one really wants to be around anybody. Um, so virtual escrow deposits are awesome. And then that also takes away from you because let's be honest, I know some of you real estate agents out there will literally say, don't worry, just write us a check and I'll take it to them. Well, you know what? It, the time it took you to do that, you could have been picking up the phone, making phone calls and generating more business. Um, so tap into that. The other thing we have is there's new virtual closings, right? So remote online notarization has boomed nationally. Use that. That's pretty awesome. Again, it's more convenient. It's cool. You know, you can celebrate a little bit more. And and I would say millennials don't necessarily need that wet signature um, experience to to feel accomplished. Um, so really consider what the entire experience what the entire experience looks like 
from you digitally, right? If I meet you and you give me an awesome digital presentation and I really start to like your online presence and then we go all the way to the closing table and it's just tech awesome, I'm pretty sure I'm going to tell my friends about you. So, so really consider that experience. All right. So smart buyers, smart homes. So did you know that millennials are the most educated group of buyers? So you might say, no, nah, not really. No, you can ask their student debt, um, but no. So older millennials, 79% of older millennials who bought a house had at least a bachelor's degree. Right. So that is important when we're digging into it um, because millennials are educated. They're going to research things. They're going to seek guidance. I think one of the things that some of us and I can't generalize all of this because I can think of a few examples. Some of us know we're not the expert at everything and we don't want to be and we don't need to be. So we seek people who are really good at that. Right. And we seek their help. I saw my long guy because I am not good at mowing the grass, but this guy's great. So we seek guidance for things. Um, one of the things you might notice, especially dealing with younger first time millennial home buyers, they might have their parents come along with them. How can you market, co market to the parent and to the millennial? Just again ask questions let them feel involved don't hum and haw i know we always usually dislike when somebody brings the dad along because he's poking around into closets and under things um but embrace it right because that is the millennial group and then with that smart buyer comes smart homes. So we're going to look for digital thermostats. We want sound systems and series and things to play our music. I want phone chargers everywhere. Um, <laughs> no. So if you see one of my favorite things that they have out, and I just think it's genius, is they literally have outlets that have the USB thing in them now. Like how awesome is that? That's a smart home kind of feature in my opinion. Um, I want something that gives me alerts, right? So if someone comes to the front door and I'm all the way back here in the back of the house, it says, hey, someone's here today. And then I can just pop up my my phone and I can see who it is. You know, we've all seen the ring and the all the different kind of camera apps. We like that stuff. Now, if a home doesn't have it, um, there are things that you can talk about with your, your buyers about getting those installed. But again, ask, ask if that's something important to them. And then really just know that we want power in a swipe. All right, now that I've hydrated. All right, so value in evolution. So if I told you that basically the phone on the left and the phone on the right is the same price, which one do you want? <coughs> Excuse me. Well, you're probably going to say the phone on the right. Why is that? It has more features. I can take it anywhere. You know, it's got games on it. I can text. I mean, most younger millennials, I do know, so I'm an older millennial, don't even know how to use the little rotary dial. But guess what? If I gave someone the choice and said they cost the same amount, no, very few people, unless you're feeling very nostalgic, would go to the phone on the left the rotary phone. <coughs> now, sorry about that, guys. So that's what I want you to think about. So a lot of agents, their commission, they list it the same. So what are you, how are you out there presenting yourself? Are you presenting yourself like that person on the left who just comes with a stack of papers as their portfolio and just wants to walk around the, 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 um, the house and kind of talk and do the traditional way you've always done it? Or are you going to evolve and, and showcase your, your technology, you know, your value based on your commission, right? So, so again, think about it. It costs the same for me to do business with an old school real estate agent or a new school. Which one would you choose? All right. <coughs> I apologize. Apparently, I have a little coughing fit. Maybe it's because I'm talking too much, which millennials like to do, at least this one. All right, so home sweet home. So what are millennial home buyers looking for? So I started digging into this a little bit because what you're going to see initially is smaller, more flexible spaces, um, luxury condos, uh, low maintenance, Instagram ready, 
social areas and pools and green spaces and all these great things. But what I want to say to you is start asking and stop assuming. So we talked about the different groups of millennials, right? The younger ones and the older ones. They're in very different places of their life, okay? And they're gonna evolve, their tastes are going to evolve. Um, so, so just make sure you're asking because I think we could put a generalization and say that, yeah, uh, millennials are buying smaller homes. That could be true, but there's also some that are buying brand new big homes. So just be cautious or conscious that it's not all one size fits all. Start asking, stop, stop assuming. All right, <clears throat> now jobs um, location. So if we look at lifestyle and location to where that house is gonna be, um, job location is very important to millennial. Um, cost, right? So commuting costs. So when you are out there marketing to them and, and finding properties for them, keep that that distance right understand how far they're willing to travel um gas is expensive when we're all driving uh public transportation is expensive um so just keep that in mind um now the other thing though if we talk about work uh, is that some of us especially now with covid we are working from home right so I remember before COVID, when I worked from home, there were times that I would just want to go sit at a coffee shop and get out of my house, okay? Hybrid work environment means I might want to be close to a Starbucks so I can go work somewhere. It might mean I need a den that also doubles as a guest room for when my parents come because I need a little office space to work in. So again, job, what they do and where it is, is very important to what they're going to end up buying. Um, family dynamics is huge. Right. So we, we talked about stats earlier and basically between 30 and 39 years old, it was 61 percent of those people that bought homes had a child under age of 18. So we are having kids later, right? We're having kids in our 30s. But what does that mean? That means the house that you're going to sell them or you're marketing to them is going to want to be in a good place for schools. So that's going to be important to us, just like it would be any, you know, any buyer a uh, green space again is it a safe neighborhood um so that kind of stuff is really going to come into play uh single and younger millennials you might find are more towards like the condos the 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 townhouses you know it's not really that big but i was reading something the other day and it was saying hey while those younger millennials are purchasing those smaller homes those condos those townhouses um, and they're doing it in areas that are walkable and just a little bit of an Uber ride away. I have that when I go downtown. I'm like, it's just a $7 Uber ride. That's how I measured the distance. Um, but literally, we're, they're planning on selling that home within 10 years. And that, my friends, is why it's very important for you when you're marketing after you sell, after you sell with them and you, you settle, you nurture them, you stay in touch with them, you check in. They're going to go through these life changes, you know, and they're going to be ready to go buy again in the 10 years. They're going to have kids and want to upgrade, stay in touch, right? You really have a great opportunity here with this generation. All right, so let's talk a little bit, and then we're almost done, I promise, about the COVID-19 impact. So I'd be a crazy person if I didn't bring this up because I think where we were with the millennial and the industry conversation back in April and you know March and January is very different than where we are today, July. Um, a lot of millennials have lost their job, just like many people, uh, which is a loss of income. Right. We now see how volatile our our economy can be. Um, so this group of millennials, this generation has saw the 2008, you know, housing crash. Right. We're like, holy moly, that scares the heck out of us. We don't want to invest so much money in something that's really going to be worthless. And we just see kind of the scarce, you know, the fear that happens and the instability, instability that it, it is concerning. Right. It's not a game changer for everybody, but it does spark a little interest. So think about those things like where what we've seen and where we are now, you know, because it definitely plays a role. Um, Interest rates, I will say interest rates right now are driving a huge amount of opportunity. 
I mean, those refinances that you saw in the previous slides for millennial, older millennials, that's huge, right? And that's maybe one of the things that you could do for marketing right now is look who within your group or within your previous customers who bought, you know, recently wants to refinance or is ready to, to upgrade or whatever. Again, stay in touch. The interest rates are really driving people at the moment. It's OK to buy. Educate them. Educate them that the market is not a bad place right now. Um, and I think what we're going to see is the work from home impact for COVID-19. So I do think the, those flexible in-home workspaces are going to play a major role in development going in the future. Um, so, so definitely keep that in mind just in the back of your head and, and file that away. Now down here it says a quarter of renters now say they will never buy a home again. And you can see here it talks about, you know, the different generations and and who thought what i'll i'll make sure that this is all in the the handout but just think and i want to say this that while you might read articles about this and that millennials aren't ever going to buy and, and it's not going to happen that's not necessarily true just like everything we evolve we're not clones we have different opinions different viewpoints, different lifestyles, um, and we don't all fit into a bucket. Um, so I hope you realize from this class that one, that there is an opportunity uh, for you guys out there to really create clients for life with millennial, um, both the younger and the older generations. Um, that it's not necessarily that they're millennials, Millennials are today's consumers. That's how we should be talking to them. Um, you know, we probably need to be doing classes like how to market to boomers and things like that at this point. Um, but right now, you know, we are a majority of the consumers and, and I think the opportunity is there and you will capture that opportunity if you're evolving in technology you're showcasing yourself, you're loving yourself, you're proud of the work you do, you're passionate. Um, millennials are very much about that. So I, I really think that that'll, that'll play a, a role in you capturing business. So that is it, um, just shameless plug. We got the la uh, upcoming uh, classes. So again, the branding and content development class is gonna be a really good one next Friday. Hopefully you guys can jump on and check it out. I'm sorry I had my coughing fits and my little stutter moments. I hope you all learned something, um, but that's all I have. And thank you so much for coming today. And I hope you learned at least a tiny thing and walked away with a nugget or two that you can go out into the world and do today. Thank you so much, Kara. Um, we did have somebody asking if this uh, class was being recorded and if it will be available to them for replay. It will, and I might even try to re-record it to where I don't cough all over everybody in everybody's ear. <laughs> I'll try. It, it was great regardless. Um, we don't have any question, any other questions just yet. Do you want to give it just another minute? Uh, we can while... give it a second and hopefully I left it did such a good job that no one had questions, which well, is, you know, what we can all really hope for. And I will tell you, if you guys um, do end up having questions and you don't type them in today and you want to reach out, um, we'll make sure that you have my contact information so that you can answer those questions another time. Did you want to read through the upcoming classes real quick? Yeah, so uh, again, we have branding and content development next Friday. That's going to talk about your personal brand and how to develop content based on your target audience. Um, we have risks, exclusions, and conditions on title insurance policy. So that's a really good one for you guys to know kind of where those robots could come up. That's being taught by our uh, title resource partner. He's our, un they're our underwriter. Then we have dot loop. So I talked earlier in this class about doing contracts virtually instead of that stack of paper. Um, dot loop's a great way to do that. Um, renovation lending for real estate agents are for realtors to help you grow your business, stay in touch with those people um, and be another point of value add. 
Zip Forms, another virtual digital platform for allowing you to do con uh, contract completion. And then become a negotiating guru um, with Mr. Brad Duggar on August 21st, 2 p.m. That, I mean, I think that is going to be an interesting class because I think we're all salespeople at heart. Some of us are a little bit more hardcore than others, um, but negotiating is a, a, a skill that's a very tough one to master. All right, thank you, Kara. And uh, I think that was it. So we Perfect. will say thank you very much for everyone that joined us and we'll see you next week. Thank you so much. Have a good one. Bye, y'all.